side pocketing by mutual funds. Ever since its introduction in 2018, everyone has been curious about this concept and a lot of you have been asking me about this. So I've decided to make a short video on side pocketing and I've tried to explain this in a very simple manner. So let's not waste any more time and let's begin. First, let us have a look at the definition of side pocketing. It is essentially the segregation of liquid investments in a debt portfolio from the illiquid investments. Essentially, what it boils down is separating the rotten apple from the good ones so that the rotten ones don't end up spoiling the good ones. SEBI introduced this concept in 2018 with a view to protect the small investors. Now, why should small investors be protected is beyond me. But then let's not get into that. So what was the situation before this concept kicked in? Let's try to figure that out with the help of an example. Let us say there is a mutual fund which has invested in a portfolio of rupees 100 crores which comprises of debt instruments issued by 5 corporates. Corporate 1, Corporate 2, 3, 4 and 5. And for simplicity's sake, let's presume that there are 5 unit holders Mr. A, B, C, D and E. The total number of units issued is 5 crores. Hence the NAV will be 100 crores divided by the number of units. That is 5 crores which gives us the net asset value or the NAV at rupees 20. We also presume that all the unit holders hold equal number of units, that is 1 crore each. Now let us presume that corporate 5 runs into financial difficulties and therefore its paper is likely to be downgraded by the rating agency. In financial markets, such paper would be called as distressed asset or toxic asset. One of the problems with such toxic paper are that these papers will stop trading in the market because the well-informed investors would not want to buy such bonds in anticipation of a likely downgrade. Another problem, of course, is that the mutual fund may not be able to recover its investment in such a paper. Let us say Mr. A, B, C and D are savvy, well-informed investor, while Mr. E is a small retail investor who most often than not will not be well-informed. Let us say Mr. A, B, C and D being well-informed investors somehow get an inkling that the bond of corporate A is likely to become toxic. In such a case, they would approach the mutual fund and redeem their units. Now remember, each of them holds 1 crore units and the NAV is rupees 20. So the mutual fund will have to sell assets totaling rupees 80 crores. So the mutual fund will sell bonds of corporate 1, 30 crores, corporate 2, 20 crores and corporate 3, another 20 crores. But that totals only 70 crores. So the fund will have to sell another 10 crores of corporate 4. Once the fund sells these and meets the redemption request of Mr. A, B, C and D, it is left with 10 crores of bonds of corporate 4 and another 10 crores of bonds of corporate E, which by the way is a distressed asset now. Now there is only one unit holder left in the fund that is Mr. E. So the entire loss arising out of bonds of corporate E will now be borne by Mr. E since the other investors have already redeemed and exited and are now possibly laughing all the way to the bank. So to prevent this kind of injury to the small investors, SEBI in introduced the concept of side pocketing. So how does side pocketing help? Well, we have all heard that one rotten apple spoils the whole basket. So what will you do? Simple, separate the good apples from the bad apples. Now this is exactly what side pocketing does. It separates the good asset from the toxic asset. What happens in a side pocketing is that the toxic asset or the distressed asset is isolated and transferred into a separate scheme. Now who will be the unit holders of this new scheme? Obviously the same unit holders of the fund that is in our example Mr. A, B, C, D and E. Remember they each hold 1 crore units in the fund. Now in addition to the units they already hold they will be given 1 crore units each in the new scheme which carries the distressed asset. These units of the scheme carrying the distressed assets cannot be sold or transferred. Once the toxic asset is segregated, the well-informed investors no longer can take advantage of the small investor. Let us see how. Now that the assets have been segregated into good and distressed assets, the emerging picture will look something like this. The original scheme will now have assets worth rupees 90 crores and the five investors will each hold 1 crore units thereby giving a net asset value of rupees 18 as far as the good assets are concerned. 
the investors will also hold 1 crore units in the scheme holding the distressed assets and these units will now have a NAV of rupees 2 that is rupees 10 crores divided by 5 crore units. But then remember these units cannot be sold or transferred. Now in this case even if investors A, B, C and D have prior information about the possible downgrade and want to redeem their units, they can redeem only the units of the scheme holding the good units. Let us say they do opt for redemption. So the mutual fund will have to pay rupees 18 into 4 crore units, that is rupees 72 crores. The fund will therefore liquidate bonds of corporate 1 for 30 crores, corporate 2 20 crores, corporate 3 another 20 crores and rupees 2 crores worth of corporate 4. Once it has met the redemption request, it will be left with 18 crores worth of bonds of corporate D, which rightfully belongs to E. So you will notice that in this case, the small investor is no longer at a disadvantage. In India, Tata Mutual Fund was the first fund to adopt side pocketing when it was introduced when it segregated its distressed asset and created a side pocket in three of its funds, namely the Tata Corporate Bond Fund, Tata Medium Term Fund and Tata Treasury Advantage Fund. Of course, subsequently many funds have resorted to it. Let us visit the web page of Tata Mutual Fund and see how the segregated scheme is disclosed. So let's launch the browser and type in Tata Mutual Fund and the first link is the link to the tatamutualfund.com official website. So we click on that. This is their homepage and uh, they have a tab of NAV and dividend. So we select the NAV and dividend. And this page now gives us the option to search and look for certain specified schemes. So we hit the search button and let's look for Tata medium term plans here. Now, if you see this Tata medium term fund direct plan bonus dividend segregated portfolio. Now, this segregated portfolio tells us that this is a portfolio which has been side pocketed, right? So, let's select this and let's say we want to see the NAV since inception and let's hit the search button. Now, this will show us the NAV for that scheme and if you see this, the NAV as on 11th August 2020 is 0.3831, which is ridiculously low. Now, this is logical because this portfolio obviously comprises only of distressed asset. So, therefore, its NAV is bound to be low, right? So, this is how a distressed portfolio or a side pocketed portfolio is shown. Hope you found this video helpful. If you have any queries or if you require any video on a specific or a particular topic, do post it in the comment section and I will try my best to create a video for it. If you like this video, please do share it and do not forget to hit the subscribe button and bang on the bell icon so that you do not miss out on any of my posts. Ciao and stay safe.